where does Texas go from here? I know you guys talked about it a little bit on the uh, the post game, um, the reaction pod. Great to hear Barton too. That was awesome. That was awesome. Um, they're in a little bit of a predicament, right? I mean, with Quinn Ewers, who hasn't been playing great, do you? Because if you go to Hudson Card, you're gonna lose Quinn Ewers. You might lose him anyway. Ah, I mean, is this just Arch Manning wait? Like, just we can't wait for Arch Manning to get here? Are they at that position? He was on the sidelines on <laughs> Saturday. So is he? Oh, he and he, I'm he, assuming he's early enrolling, right? In January. I mean, that's the trend. That I don't know. I would assume so. There are a couple schools that don't allow that that are still around, like some private schools. Like Danny, down by you, Aquinas doesn't allow uh, early sure. enrolling. You have to stay with, with your your graduating class. Would it shock you guys if, if Texas, like post after this year comes out, is like, yeah, by the way, like Quinn Ewers was hurt? No. I, I'm not saying that, that he was, but like he does look different in the last month. And we knew about the hand thing, but. He just is not accurate uh, at all. Like like the last three or four games, his play has been uh, been pretty, pretty subpar. Um, I I always like the. It's easy to talk about quarterbacks when they're great, right? It's also easy to play quarterback when everything is going great. That's yeah. why I like to watch quarterbacks. How do you respond? Like I I don't ever feel like I get a really good evaluation on a quarterback until I've seen him throw a couple pick sixes and have a rough game. See, all right, what does he do the next game? And what does he do the next drive? And like I would say, the early returns on Quinn Ewers is he hasn't responded great. I mean, I think DJ Ue Ungle is a great one. Remember how it was phenomenal against Notre Dame? Everything's great. He's the quarterback of the future. Then you have a couple of bad games, and now I watch him. If he has a bad throw, I'm worried about him. Like, uh oh, where's his where's his mind? Has he lost his confidence? And Quinn Ewers, I don't know if he's lost his confidence, but man, the body language. And I don't love to be the body language police, but it is very indifferent. Um, from the quarterback, and I get he's young, but I'd want to see a little bit more angry energy or something that's just not what you're getting from Quinn Ewers on the sidelines. That, you guys see that too? Yeah. And I mean, they, and then you saw like the the screen grab of his face was kind of like I don't know if there was like um, an RBF for quarterbacks, like a QBF. I guess. <laughs> I mean, like I think that's how you would describe it. I want to get a T-shirt with QBF. Um, it just looks like it's just an indifferent attitude. And I get it doesn't matter that much, but there's a Jay Cutler-esque um, Josh DGAF Rosen. kind of, you know. yeah. Yeah, like. I, think, I, I wrote about it in the Monday after. It hasn't been published yet, but a question for you guys, because it's something I wrote about. 22 games into Sark's tenure, what's different? Nothing. Yeah, what is different at Texas that hasn't been the case there for the last since Mac hell since they lost the BCS title game to Alabama? What has changed under Sark? They got significantly better from year one to year two, I would say. Which it remains to be seen. Did they though? Yeah. No, I, I think qu quality of play. I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, but I mean, if let's go back to Tom Herman, who went went seven and what like I can't remember. They he was did seven they or eight, eight and, wins a year. Eight and his first year, they got to a bowl game. The next year they went ten and four and beat Oklahoma. Sark's first year they went five and seven and they beat Oklahoma, but the Oklahoma Herman beat ended up in the college football playoff. The Oklahoma Sark beat is, might not get to a bowl game. So I just it's it's the same stuff to me. It's like oh the recruiting classes are great. Well they were great under Herman. He had top five classes. They were, they had top ten classes under Charlie Strong. They had top ten classes under Mac Brown, and it's just nothing but mediocre results after mediocre results. And it's like. I'm watching this Texas team, and it's got a ton of talent. It's usually the most talented team on the field. It doesn't win games, or at least it's not winning games as often as they should be. And it's like, I'm just, we're into the second year, and I'm sitting there looking at it, too. Across the field is Sonny Dykes. And last year, TCU was a program that looked dead on its feet. Like, the players seemed unhappy. The coaching staff seemed unhappy. They went for a reset. Sonny Dyke shows in. This is a team that's 10 and 0. It's already clinched a spot in the Big 12 title game and might get to the college football playoff in year one. Sark's in year two, and it's still like, well, they just need more time. And I just, I, I'm not very confident in what's going to be happening there. I don't know if Arch Manning, like, is Arch Manning the latest savior who's just going to, you know, I, I don't know. So a couple things on that, Tom. Number one, I agree with you that, like, like the actual win loss results are not getting better yet. But if you look at, like, under the hood, I do think that they are getting a lot better. Like, this is the best Texas team in a number of years, to, to my eyes, right? 
Like the they got the one that beat that Georgia team that didn't really care to be there. I think in the Sugar Bowl, you know, whatever. Uh, but this is a I think this is a quality Texas team that has losses that are really only by one score, right? Like nobody has blown these guys out. Their wins are generally pretty impressive overall, right? Like they they I think we're a considerably better team against Kansas State, although the way they kind of held on there uh, was a little bit scary. I think Sark is legitimately improving them along the lines of scrimmage uh, to where, like, if you're going to be a bully, you have to be able to bully people at the point of attack. The, the young offensive linemen who they signed that are playing right now are playing well, especially the Banks kid. And even if you thought this was going poorly, if you're Texas administration, I almost never advocate for like, hey, hold on to this coach because of his recruiting class. I just think that's not a, it's kind of putting the cart before the horse. With the Arch class, I do think it's different. Right. Like, like he's kind of the Pied Piper of that class. They have a lot of kids who are taking notice of that class. They have a chance to finish with several more five stars down the stretch. I, I think I you... think Tom brings up a really good point, though. They've all they've had top three classes before mm-hmm. and it hasn't translated. And how do you think like I, I, I told I hear both sides of what you guys are saying, and I agree with both of you. But how do you feel if you're a Texas fan and you've got all this talent and you're you're probably going to watch. TCU play Kansas State, the Big 12 championship game, and you're sitting at home with, mm-hmm. you know, four losses. That's how you if you're Greg Sankey. Like, yeah. hey, Texas, Oklahoma, like, we're, we're, we sure we got the right teams out of this league? See, like, we're looking at, we're looking at a Texas team that's going to be eight and four. Maybe they need to get out of the Big 12. Yeah, we're looking at a team that's going to be like eight and four, maybe going to win SEC. a bowl game. I mean, a lot of Get, get a lot of momentum going into the offseason and then start next year in the top 15. Where have I heard this story before? And while it's not like... College Station? <laughs> but I'm saying it's it's every year in Austin. We can make fun of College Station all we want, but it's been the same damn story in Austin for a decade every single offseason. But it's, to me, like it's not a hard and fast rule. But typically when you make the coaching change and you bring in the hire, while you don't have to see like the team winning 10 games in year two, you tend to know by the second year if it's going to work. And I haven't seen anything from this program to this point that's happened on the field that makes me think this is going to work. It's the same inconsistent thing every week. It's like the offense plays well, the defense plays like crap. The defense finally comes out, plays an amazing game against the top offense in the country, and the offense can't do a damn thing. There's never a complete game. And it's been the story for that program for a decade. This has the scheme been upgraded under Sark? Yes. I remember yeah, I a lot of frustration. Is fine. Yeah, play call. Especially calling, defensively. Team. Like they're playing really they're playing. good on defense. What shout hey. Shout out to Gary Patterson. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, if like Patterson's archaic views on, you know, like player rights and stuff, it aside, it, the guy clearly knows scheme. So if he doesn't actually have to like coach the the team and manage the the players and roster i I think that's a great addition for texas if you look at how tcu tuned that guy out last year that's why i'm I'm out on the idea of patterson you know coming back as head coach here's the other thing for me though going back i'm sorry to keep harping on this no it's a good discussion sark was doing the same thing at washington except at the time washington was terrible and it was good then he gets to usc and it was the same problems at USC that I'm seeing here as far as the results on the field. It's like there's a whole bunch of stuff off the field that makes you think, hey, look, they're recruiting well. These are all signs. They're going to be back. We're going to take that next step. And then it just never happens. I, it's like losing. You don't think they've the taken football. a step. You don't think they've taken a step in how they're playing? Like, I, I think that like this year's Texas team beats the they're, crap out of last year's Texas team. Yeah. And this year's Texas team is still only six and four. Last year's was five and seven. Yeah, but so this is sort of process results, right? Like, how, how are they playing? He's won half his games. He's won half his... I get that. The process is great, but do you get judged on your process or your results? Well, if you're a decision maker, you better damn sure look at the process, right? You better say, like, are they playing better? They're playing a lot better. We are, and we're six and four. Is that what sure. our goal is? With more talent than probably... Yes. How many games have they been favored in that you're, they've lost? You're, like I said, you are right, the so better team to... every week, and your process is well, but maybe the process isn't that great. Their losses are what? Bama by a one point, point when Ewers mm-hmm. gets knocked out. All right. Mm-hmm. At Texas Tech, when Texas Tech makes a makes a boatload of you know mm-hmm. fourth down plays. And Texas, I thought played better Texas Tech in that game. And they, they lost by a field goal, right? Mm-hmm. They lost to Oklahoma State by a touchdown on the road. And that was mm-hmm. when they still had Sanders, right? That wasn't the backup get for Oklahoma State. It was like a month ago. Yeah, and you got shut and out lost. the second half. They did, no doubt. 
and they and they lost by one Coach score in the second half. Look, uh, one of the hallmarks of good teams when they don't have good records, but like you can tell that they're playing better, is that their wins are generally a lot more dominant than their losses are. And I'm not Iowa saying State Sark's doing a great job. Iowa State was a 24-21 win. They nearly blew a 17-point lead to Kansas State last week. We're about a play away from Texas being on a three-game losing streak. The process doesn't seem what, to be doing all that well. Them being three plays away from undefeated or four? But I like your point. So was Nebraska like, and Scott Frost last year. Remember, they were the best yeah. three and nine team we've seen. Like at some point, like I, I could see totally see both sides because I don't think anybody should be calling for Sark to be on the hot seat yet. But it definitely is going to be heated coming into next year. And at some point, to Tom's point, like this is almost fifteen years now where we've tried. Was this coach number three or four that we've tried to make change just for change sake, and you get the same exact result. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm not sitting here saying they should fire Sark or look for a new yeah, coach. I'm just saying I'm, I'm not very optimistic about where this is going. I don't think it's going to work. 